Forspoken is an action role-playing game developed by Luminous Productions and published by Square Enix, which was released on January 24, 2023. The game was released for PlayStation 5 and PC. Now, if you are hearing the name Luminous Productions, then obviously you know it's one of the studios behind the popular Final Fantasy series. Now, on Forspoken itself, the game is an action-adventure game, as I mentioned. Uh, Role-playing aspects set in a fantasy world of Athia, or Athia, however you want to say it, where players control a young woman named Frey Holland who is on a journey to uncover the truth behind her mysterious powers. Everyone has something they're willing to fight for. It could be family, friends, your beliefs, your home. Doesn't matter who you are, there's just some things you have to protect. But what do you do when the world fights back? Guess I know now. Wish I could go back in time and tell myself. But I was not ready to hear it. Frey is transported from New York City to the fantasy world of Athia, where she must use her magical powers to journey through it and survive in order to find her way home. And in all of this, Athia is under tyrannical rule. And so Frey is caught in between this little war between the two factions. Now, Forspoken itself is a debut project for Luminous Productions. As I mentioned, the company was originally assembled from employees who worked on Final Fantasy. So that's where the Final Fantasy series links that I mentioned earlier in the video come from. Now, the story of Forspoken is intriguing. It's got a well-crafted world, visually stunning world, and a protagonist who's easy to relate to. The game's plot is full of twists and turns, and the pacing is excellent. I think for an open world game, it had really good pacing. And although I played through mostly the main story, so I didn't get to sort of deep dive into some of the side quests as much as I wanted to, I think most of the main story content kept me engaged enough throughout the game. And I think Frey, in of herself, was a very strong character. Although I didn't like some of the, the other side characters. Uh, sort of sort of like the, the love-hate relationship I have with like Horizon, Horizon side characters. <laughs> Where I can sort of relate to Aloy, but I can't get connected or attached to every, uh, any other of the other side characters. <laughs> in terms of gameplay, Forspoken offers a mix of combat and puzzle solving. With players using Frey's powers, to fight enemies and overcome obstacles. I think the combat is probably the strongest aspect of this game. The combat was really fun. The parkour movement was really fun. And the combat, you know, takes a little getting used to, but once you get used to it and once you get to the rhythm and, you know, change some of the button mapping, I think it becomes a really fun experience. And I like how it's fast paced and satisfying. And the puzzles themselves are also challenging, but not overly difficult. Something that, you know, PlayStation Studios tend to always do. The game itself always features, <coughs> excuse me, I say always, also features an open world, allowing players to explore the game's world and discover new locations and secrets. The graphics in Forspoken are stunning, with detailed characters and environments that look truly next-gen. And the game's sound design is also top-notch, with an excellent soundtrack and great voice acting. And speaking on said soundtrack, Bear McCrary, uh, the God of War composer, was also one of the people that worked on the Forspoken soundtrack. And especially for me, the, the main theme song, I forgot the name of it. Um, I'm going to use it in the intro to this video. Ooh, one of my favorite songs. Um, it was a really good soundtrack. But yeah, overall, the, the soundtrack and the atmosphere and everything was really top notch. The visuals of the open world was really top notch. But I did have my gripe with the open world feeling a little bit of empty. You know, a little bit of Ubisoft emptiness, as I like to call it. <laughs> or, uh, most recently, I would say Dying Light 2 emptiness, where a lot of fun parkour movement, a lot of fun combat, but 
the world doesn't really feel uh, alive, you know, it doesn't give me, how do I, I don't even know how to describe this, but y you know when you play a game and the open world feels kind of soulless, <laughs> I think my always, my benchmark for me is always like the Red Dead Redemption 2 example where the Red Dead Redemption 2 open world is truly alive, whereas some of the other open worlds we get, they're not really meant to be alive, it's just meant to look visually stunning but it's only meant to be alive in the sections that the player is active in basically <coughs> but yeah outside of that the, the world itself high quality graphics high quality visuals uh square enix uh, did really well with this uh slash luminous productions uh again square enix known to their attention to detail and high production value and i think uh they did well in that aspect of the game the storyline was engaging enough, uh, like I said, I, it was immersive, but I didn't get attached to some of the, the side characters, so that's where I compared a little bit to Horizon, where some some forgettable side characters, but really good voice acting. Also, one thing that was pretty weird was the delivery of the voice acting felt kind of off, even though the voice acting itself was good, which is something I, I don't know, like, I, of course I don't work in the background in gaming, so I don't know what led to that decision, but again the voice actors did really well but the delivery felt kind of off on the characters if uh, if that makes any sense uh, where it, it felt like the they were sort of disconnected yeah it didn't really feel like it was coming from the character that kind of thing as well as the cuff being a little bit too chatty but they did offer an option in the menu to be able to turn down uh, some of the quips of the cuff <laughs> kind of like with high on life when when they let you turn down the, the guns talking back to you that kind of thing because <laughs> I feel like the developers already knew that you know some people will like it some people will hate it so it's one of those but yeah overall I would say uh, 7 out of 10 um, I already mentioned prior to in this video Dying Light 2 that's probably the comparison I can give uh, a Forspoken where I would say it's a must play game if you enjoy the concept like again Dying Light 2 if you really liked that zombie parkour concept in this case if you like the magic parkour concept i think you'll have a lot of fun with this game the story and gameplay are both excellent the game's world is beautiful and immersive but again it's not worth triple a pricing so that's where i would say if you're into the game and uh, the concept of the game as i keep saying uh, i call it a concept i don't know if you should call it like a genre or something like that or like the idea of a game uh, i think you'll enjoy it even at triple a pricing but if you're not too keen on like the whole magic parkour kind of thing, uh, likewise again like with Dying Light 2, if you're not too keen on the whole zombie parkour thing, then I would say just wait for a discount, play the game then, enjoy it then, because uh, it's still a great game. Just yeah, not something I would put in the AAA pricing bucket. So I would rate the game, like I said, 7 out of 10 overall. Uh, I had a great experience with it. Uh, my playthrough is up on the channel already uh, although i'm recording this before i make the playthrough live so when this comes out you guys would have already seen uh the playthrough going up on the channel apologies for the noise in the background my air freshener keeps going off uh but yeah i would rate forspoken 7 out of 10 great game interesting story great gameplay very 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 good gameplay that is uh, great soundtrack but it may not be for everyone again like i said the emptiness of the open world lets it down, as well as uh, the weird, the awkwardness of the voice acting <laughs> kind of lets it down a little bit. But yeah, uh, shout out to Luminous, shout out to Square Enix. Uh, I know a lot of people will like this game. A lot of people will also hate the game, but yeah, ultimately I think it was a good delivery. Um, comes in a month where we also have the Dead Space remake, and then we have Hogwarts Legacy coming up as well, that kind of thing. So 2023, there's going to be a lot of good games to play, so... Again, if this is not down your alley, don't bother yourself paying AAA pricing for it. Uh, just buy it on discount or sale or anything like that. So, again, I never know why gamers always have to like get super angry <laughs> about things like these. Um, so, like I said last year, again, this is basically a carbon copy of my Dying Light 2. <laughs> Should you buy, basically? Um, you could pretty much copy and paste everything I said for the Dying Light 2 for Forspoken. If you like the concept, buy it. If you're not too much of a fan of the concepts, I would still say buy it, but buy it at a discount. 
keyword being discount. So when you're not paying full price for it, uh, you're not really gonna feel, you know, under underwhelmed by it, I guess. Uh, but yeah, if, if you're expecting AAA, Callisto Protocol again also falls into that bracket where some people were expecting, you know, something that was supposed to challenge a game of the year contenders and that kind of thing. But nah, going with your tapered expectations. Really good game. Has a um, some decent amount of flaws, but also has a decent amount of strength. So yeah, one of those games that, like I said, strong seven. I'm not gonna put it in the eight because you know it's, it doesn't belong in that category, but a strong seven. But yeah, as always, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will be doing more of these brief JG plays again. Like I said, I did some of them last year, but I, I stopped and I started doing a bit more deep dive video essays, but I'm not too sure if people like those deep dive video essays. I do love them though, but like a lot of research goes into doing those, as well as gathering all the footage <laughs> for the gameplay itself. itself. So like, for example, the Days Gone video, I had to go back and replay Days Gone again. Because when I originally played Days Gone, I didn't record all the footage, so I had to redo it again. But yeah, uh, I enjoy doing the long video essays, and I think I'm going to keep doing them on the channel. But I figured maybe for those that don't really want to sit through 20, 30 minute videos, probably these sort of shorter uh, should you play videos could probably you know, fill the gap. But yeah, as always, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay dangerous, stay blessed, and peace out.